Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about the crystalluria by sulfonamides. And let us see what is the effect of PK of sulfonamides on crystalluria. Sulfonamides are one of the drugs which are used as antibacterial agents. And even few of the other category of drugs are having the sulfonamide moiety. For example, thigeid diuretics are also having the sulfonamide structure. But what are the sulfonamides which are used as antibacterials can be easily identified by the prefix sulf or sulfa. So within the name, if we observe the sulf, it indicates that they are antibacterials. So we have so many sulfonamides like sulfa methoxazole, sulfa isoxazole, sulfa estamide, sulfa diazine. In this way, so many drugs are there. And all these drugs are going to act as antibacterials by inhibiting the folic acid synthesis within the bacteria. So these drugs are going to inhibit one of the important step in the folic acid synthesis that is a conversion of the PABA para amino benzoic acid into the folic acid. This step is mediated by one of the enzyme dihydroteriate synthase enzyme which is going to be inhibited by sulfonamides. This is because sulfonamides are having a structural similarity with the para amino benzoic acid so they can compete for the enzyme thereby they inhibit the enzymatic activity. So these structures are somewhat similar to the paramino benzoic acid where the carboxylic acid is replaced with the sulfonamide. In this way, the sulfonamides can inhibit the folic acid synthesis by competing with the PABA. But again, because of this structure, these drugs can produce the crystalluria as one of the important side effect. So today in this video, let us see how they are going to produce the crystalluria and how we can minimize the crystalluria and what are the structural modifications in order to reduce the crystalluria. So let us see first sulfonamide that is developed. The first sulfonamide is having a simple structure like this. This is nothing but the sulfonilamide. You can observe that sulfonilamide is having some structural similarity to the para amino benzoic acid where the carboxylic acid is replaced with the sulfonamide. This sulfonilamide is present in one of the diprontosyl. And here two functional groups are there, amino group as well as sulfonamide. We have to give the preference to the sulfonamide so we can start the numbering from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now at the fourth position, we can observe an amino group. So sulfonilamide is nothing but the para amino benzene sulfonamide. Now you can see that it is structurally similar to the para amino benzoic acid. But this drug can form the crystals in the urine which results in the crystalluria. Why it is like this? If any drug is going to form the crystals in the urine, it indicates that the drug is not soluble in the urine. In other words, drug is not having aqua solubility. So it is going to be precipitated in the urine as crystals leading to crystalluria. And again, the solubility of the drugs in the urine depends on the pK value. So here the sulfonilamide is having a pK value around 10. We know that uh, acid strength can be indicated by the pK value. Higher the pK value, lower the acidity. Similarly, the basis can be indicated by the pKb value, but normally we indicate the basis even with the pK value. Here the pK value is given as 10. Then what is the nature of the sulfonilamide, whether it is an acidic or basic drug? We know that acid is a substance which donates the proton and base is a substance which accepts the proton. Now let us see whether the sulfonilamide can donate the proton or not. So this is a sulfonilamide structure and it is having an NH2 group attached to the benzene. So this is having some aniline like structure and aniline acts as a base. But at the same time it is having the sulfonamide moiety. And here the amide nitrogens are also having the protons. Suppose one of the proton is going to be removed from this amide nitrogen then what happens then the structure can be converted into like this and here you can observe that now the amide nitrogen is having only one hydrogen along with uh, a negative charge but this negative charge can be stabilized because this amide nitrogen is attached with the sulfoxide so now this uh, negative charge can be delocalized to this bond and here this uh, double bond can be shifted to single bond such that it is going to be converted into a resonating structure like this and it can also form the ender resonating structure because of presence of ender oxygen. In this way, this structure will have the more resonating structures, thereby it is resonance stabilized. Now by removal of proton, it forms an anion which is stabilized by resonance. So sulfonamides can donate the protons in presence of a base. So that's why sulfonilamide acts as a weak acid. It is not a strong acid, it is a weak acid having a pK value around 10 which is comparable to the acidity of the phenols. So even sulfonilamide is having an aniline-like structure, but still this drug acts as a weak acid because of the sulfonamide group. And since sulfonilamide acts as a weak acid, it can form the salts with the bases, but whether it's forming the salt or it still present as an acid depends on the pH of the solution. 
at alkaline ph it mainly forms the salts but at the acidic ph it mainly exists as acidic form what happens at ph6 sulfonylamide is having a pk value around 10 now it acts as a weak acid now we can assess what is the nature of this drug at the ph value as 6 we know one of the equation henderson hasselbalch equation so according to this henderson hasselbalch equation for a weak acid the ph is equal to pka plus log of a minus by he that means ph is equal to pka plus log of salt by acid otherwise ionized by unionized so here ph is 6 and pk is equal to 10 so we can substitute in this equation then 6 is equal to 10 plus log of a minus by he now what is the ratio of this a minus by he log of a minus by he is equal to 6 minus 10 which is nothing but to minus 4 so now the logarithm of ratio of a minus by he is equal to minus 4 otherwise when you take the anti logarithm the ratio of a minus by he is equal to 10 to the power of minus 4 this indicates that the concentration of the a minus is very very less compared with the concentration of the he that means the salt form of the drug is very less compared with the acid form now at ph6 sulfonylamide mainly exists as acid form that means it exists as a unionized form and unionized forms are less soluble in the water so at ph6 sulfonylamide will have very poor aqua solubility now let us see the two compartments this is the blood that is a systemic circulation and these are renal tubules now sulfonylamide molecules are present as soluble form within the blood and they can be secreted into the renal tubules by glomerular filtration as well as tubular secretion and within the renal tubules the ph is around 6 where this drug is unionized all we have seen at ph6 the sulfonylamide mainly exists as an acid form or unionized form so now at ph6 the sulfonylamide exists as unionized form such that the drug molecules are going to be precipitated from the solution as the crystals now sulfonylamide forms the crystals within the urine because of less aqua solubility and with a repeated dose of the sulfonylamide, the more number of crystals are formed within the renal tubules, which produce a tubular damage. In this way, sulfonylamide can produce a crystalluria because it acts as a weak acid, and at the urinary pH, it mainly exists as anionized form, thereby it is precipitated from the solution to produce the crystals in the urine. How to reduce the crystalluria? Now we know that sulfonylamide produces a crystalluria, but how we can minimize the crystalluria? One of the approaches is large intake of the fluids. When more amount of the fluids are going to be taken, what are the crystals formed in the urine can be flushed out. So by large intake of the fluids, we can improve the water solubility of the crystals, thereby we can minimize the crystalluria. But this is not always possible and practical in the patients. So let us see the second approach. Modifying the pK values nearer to the pH of the urine. This is very important. If we are going to change the pK value of the drug such that it is forming very less crystals in the urine, we can minimize the crystalluria. So this modification of the pK value can be done by the structural modifications, which is one of the important approach to prevent the crystalluria. And third one is the increase the pH of the urine. If already crystals are found within the urine, we can solubilize the crystals by using the urinary alkanizers. So we can use the urinary alkanizers like the sodium bicarbonate, which can increase the pH of the urine thereby they can dissolve the water of the crystals found within the urine you can see that second and third approach are quite opposite second approach is to decrease the pk value and third approach is to increase the ph value so any of these can prevent the crystalluria and fourth one is use of triple sulfos we can use the triple or quadruple sulfos where more number of uh, sulfonamides are going to be mixed at a low dose so each individual sulfonamide can produce their therapeutic activity but as the dose is somewhat reduced they can have less individual crystal formation thereby the total crystalluria can be minimized so, so these are the four approaches in order to minimize the crystalluria but one of the important approach is the structural modifications where we are going to adjust the pk value nearer to the ph of the urine such that the crystalluria can be minimized so now let us see the structural modifications so this is a sulfonylamide structure and this drug acts as a weak acid because of the amide nitrogens are having the acidic protons which can be relatively easily removed. Now if we replace one of the proton with any other group we can modify the pK value. Now the sulfonylamide is having a pK value around 10 and we have to bring this pK value nearer to the 
6 which is nearer to the pH of the urine. So this can be achieved by substitution of this amine nitrogen with the heterocyclic rings. So by these structural modifications we can reduce the pK value. But what happens when the pK value is going to be reduced and when it comes nearer to the pH of the urine? So all we have seen for a weak acid according to the Henderson Hasselbalch equation pH is equal to pK plus log of A minus by HA. So when we bring the pK value nearer to the pH that means when the pH is equal to pKa then what happens? When the pH is equal to pKa then log of A minus by HA is equal to 0 which indicates that the concentration of the A minus is equal to HA because log 1 is equal to 0. So when the pH is equal to pKa the concentration of the salt is equal to the concentration of the acid. That means now the drug will present as 50% as salt and 50% as acid. So it exists as 50% ionized form which is sufficient to solubilize the drug in the urine. In this way by bringing the pK value nearer to the pH we can minimize the crystalluria formed by the sulfonamides. So now let us see different examples of the sulfonamides and what is their pK values and what are the structural modifications. Let us say sulfonamide and their pK value the sulfisoxazole. Sulfisoxazole is having a pK value around 5.0 which is somewhat nearer to the pH of the urine and sulfoestamide is having 5.4 and sulfamethoxazole is 6.1 sulfadiazine is 6.5 and sulfamerazine is 7.1 in this way the pK values are going to be arranged nearer to the pH of the urine that is around 6 which minimizes the risk of the crystalluria so this is the structure of the sulfoestamide and here what are the substitution on the amide nitrogen is the acetamide now by substitution of the estimate the pK value is going to be reduced to the 5.4. Similarly second one is the sulfisoxazole. What is the hydrocyclic ring system in the sulfisoxazole on the amine nitrogen? So this is the ring system. This is having oxygen at first position and nitrogen at the second position. And this ring is attached by fifth position to the amide nitrogen. So this is the 1,2 oxazole or commonly it is also called as isoxazole. This isoxazole ring is attached by fifth position to the amine nitrogen of the sulfonamide. And this drug is having a pKa value around 5.0. Next one is the sulfamethoxazole. This sulfamethoxazole is again having the same ring system, isoxazole ring system, otherwise it's also called as 1,2-oxazole. But this 1,2-oxazole is attached by third portion to the amine nitrogen of the sulfonamide. And because of this, now this is having a pKa value around 6.1. You can see that just by changing the position of attachment of the ring, the pKa value is somewhat different. Sulfisoxazole is having 5.0 whereas sulfamethoxazole is having 6.1. Next one is the sulfadiazine. Sulfadiazine is having one of the ring system with two nitrogens. This is nothing but the pyrimidine and it is having a pK value around 6.5. In this way we can have the different types of uh, sulfonamides which are having the heterocyclic ring system on, on the amine nitrogen of the sulfonamide which reduce the pK value nearer to the pH of the urine. And as the pK value approaches nearer to the pH of the urine the salt formation is increased which can minimize the formation of the crystals in the urine. So that's about the crystal urea produced by sulfonamides. Sulfonylamide is the first sulfonamide that is developed but which is having a pK value around 10 which, which produce the crystals in the urine. So this crystal urea can be minimized by large intake of fluids, structural modifications, by using the urinary alkanizers as well as by mixing the different types of sulfonamides. But the structural modifications are the more preferred which bring the pK value nearer to the pH of the urine resulting in the minimization of the crystalluria. So that's for today. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.